Hey guys, it's Chris. Some of the most fascinating discoveries throughout human history were made unintentionally, from life-saving drugs to bombs that can explode at a moment's notice. Here are eight crazy accidental discoveries. Number 8. Penicillin In 1928, Alexander Fleming, professor of bacteriology at St. Mary's Hospital in London, went on vacation halfway through an experiment he was conducting on the Staphylococcus bacteria, which causes boils, sore throats, and abscesses. He left a dirty petri dish in the sink, and when he returned, he noticed bacteria was present everywhere on the slide, except where the mold had grown. This area immediately around each clump of mold was clear, as if the mold had secreted a substance that prohibits bacterial growth. This rare strain of mold was identified as Penicillium notatum, and upon further investigation, Fleming realized that it kills a wide range of harmful bacteria. He tasked his assistants with isolating pure penicillin from the bacteria, and the solution initially proved to be very unstable. Fleming made a passing reference to the therapeutic benefits of penicillin in the British Journal of Experimental Pathology in June 1929. Penicillin was successfully converted into a life-saving drug in 1939 by the scientists Howard Florey and Ernest Chain, along with their colleagues at the Sir William Dunn School of Pathology at Oxford University. Penicillin represents the onset of an era of antibiotics, and one of the most valuable advancements of all time in the field of therapeutic medicine. Before the introduction of penicillin, there was no effective treatment available for a wide range of conditions that are common commonly treatable today, including pneumonia, gonorrhea, rheumatic fever, and blood poisoning. Number 7. Saccharin Saccharin is the oldest artificial sweetener. The calorie-free sugar alternative was discovered accidentally in 1879 by a researcher named Constantine Falberg. One day, Falberg left the laboratory of Professor Ira Remsen at Johns Hopkins University where he'd been working, and he went for lunch. He forgot to wash his hands before eating, and during the meal, Falberg noticed that his bread tasted unusually sweet. It was then that he remembered having spilled a chemical in his hands before breaking for lunch. Remsen and Falberg jointly published the discovery in 1880. However, Falberg obtained a patent for saccharin in 1884 and began mass producing it on his own accord. Saccharin gained widespread use during World War I when sugar was rationed. During the 1960s and 70s, it became even more popular with the production of diet soda drinks and sweet and low. Number 6. Silly Putty Engineer James Wright set out to create an inexpensive substitute for synthetic rubber. During World War II, while employed at the General Electric Lab in Connecticut, he combined boric acid with silicone oil, which resulted in a bouncier and stretchier substance than rubber. Wright also noticed that when it was flattened against a newspaper, it picked up a copy of the print. The government had no interest in Wright's fun but seemingly impractical discovery. A few years later, however, it was marketed as Silly Putty by a savvy businessman named Peter Hodgson, who noticed that it was popular at parties. He released the product around Easter time and put it inside colorful plastic eggs as a clever marketing tactic. Silly Putty eventually proved to have practical uses, such as lint removal and stabilizing wobbly chairs and table legs. It was even used by astronauts to keep tools secure in zero gravity during the Apollo 8 mission. And get this, did you know that Silly Putty shatters when it's launched with enough force? A graduate student at Alfred University in New York State discovered this effect in 1989 by dropping a 100-pound ball of the substance from the roof of a campus building to see what would happen. The first time it hit the ground, it bounced eight feet straight back up in the air, and upon its second impact, the ball shattered. Number 5. Quinine Quinine is an anti-malarial compound originating from tree bark. It's found in tonic water and is used in drugs to treat malaria. The documented use for quinine for treating malaria dates back as far as the 1600s, when it was a popular remedy among Jesuit missionaries in South America. But its use may go back even further than that. According to legend, the missionaries got the idea for using quinine from the native Andean population. Also, according to legend, the healing properties of quinine were discovered on accident 
by a feverish man who drank from a pool of water surrounding a kina kina tree. He feared he would become sicker when he noticed the water's bitter taste and thought he drank poison. But to the man's surprise, his symptoms completely alleviated. There are other more well-documented cases of the discovery of quinine's medicinal properties. Nobody knows for sure which account holds the most truth, though, but it is very possible that the benefits of quinine were discovered by a stroke of luck. Quinine is a simple compound that continues to be used to this day, despite its low therapeutic index and high potential for adverse side effects, including tinnitus, vertigo, and diarrhea. The World Health Organization recommends a combination of quinine and an antibiotic for treating malaria. Number 4. Velcro Many people are familiar with the adhesive effects of burdock burrs, and it was this plant that served as the inspiration for the invention of Velcro. After hunting in the Jura Mountains with his dog one day in 1948, Swiss engineer George de Mistral closely examined some cockle burrs that had become stuck to his clothing using a microscope. He noticed they became attached to cloth and fur via small hooks that covered the seeds. Demistral then created what we know as Velcro with the help of some friends in the weaving business, despite having no initial plans to develop a fastening system. Velcro first came to the USA in 1957. It was adopted by NASA and also became a popular fastener on clothing and accessories such as sneakers, jackets, and handbags. Number 3. LSD the hallucinogenic drug LSD was discovered in 1938 by a 32-year-old Swiss scientist named Albert Hoffman. He was employed by the Swiss chemical company Sandoz, and his goal was to develop a compound that would stimulate the respiratory and circulatory systems. Lysergic acid was originally isolated from a fungus that grows on rye, and Hoffman successfully synthesized it for the first time in 1938. The plan was to use variations of this chemical in pharmaceuticals. And today, many derivatives of lysergic acid are in fact still used. However, the LSD-25 compound initially proved to be apparently useless. But for some reason, Hoffman couldn't stop thinking about this seemingly useless LSD-25 compound. And five years later, he resumed his experimentation with it. He accidentally tasted his creation in 1943 and began feeling restless and dizzy. He went home and laid down while he wrote out what he later described as a kind of drunkenness which was not unpleasant and which was characterized by extreme activity of imagination. Hoffman closed his eyes because he found the daylight to be unbearably bright. Then he experienced an uninterrupted stream of fantastic images, of extraordinary plasticity and vividness, and accompanied by an intense kaleidoscope-like play of colors, as he later stated in his notes. At first, Hoffman assumed that he'd inhaled the fumes of a chloroform-like solvent he'd been using and attempted to replicate the psychedelic effects he had experienced by doing so again. Nothing happened and he realized he must have ingested a trace amount of the LSD-25 compound through his fingertips. Soon after his initial encounter with LSD, Hoffman intentionally took the drug orally and rode his bicycle home alongside his assistant, who remained sober. During his bike ride, Hoffman experienced strong hallucinogenic effects, and this was just one of several instances of self-experimentation with LSD that he would carry out throughout his entire career. Number 2. Insulin In 1889, two doctors named Oskar Minkowski and Joseph von Mehring removed the pancreas of a healthy dog at the University of Strasbourg. They were attempting to understand how the organ affects digestion. The doctors noticed that flies were swarming near the dog's urine a few days later. When they tested the urine, they found sugar in it and realized they had given the poor dog diabetes by removing his pancreas. They were unable, however, to isolate the blood sugar regulating substance produced by the organ. A number of scientists subsequently attempted and also failed to isolate the substance. Between 1920 and 1922, a series of experiments were carried out by physician Frederick Banting and medical student Charles H. Best at the University of Toronto. They successfully isolated the pancreatic secretion and called it insulin. The men injected a diabetic dog with insulin in 1921 and discovered that it lowered the animal's blood sugar levels to normal. Banting and Best then set out to purify insulin. 
With the help of Canadian chemist James B. Collip and Scottish physiologist J.J.R. McLeod, they accomplished this goal by the end of the year. Shortly thereafter, the pharmaceutical company Eli Lilly began manufacturing and selling insulin, and the team that successfully isolated and purified it was awarded the Nobel Prize. Number 1. World War II Era Bombs Ordinarily speaking, it's not uncommon for people to accidentally discover World War II era explosives throughout Europe. In case a newly discovered explosive is alive, a special bomb unit is typically called in to safely remove the device from the scene. Residents in a small central German town of Limburg recently got the surprise of a lifetime when a World War II era bomb self detonated outside their village. They awoke to an alarming sound, which they thought was a meteor collision. And the 33-foot-wide, 13-foot-deep crater they found the following morning did nothing but bolster their theory. However, local officials later confirmed that the crater was caused by a 550-pound World War II bomb. The bomb was most likely dropped from a fighter plane. Experts concluded that the explosion was triggered by the deterioration of the bomb's chemical detonator. Given the area's history as the former location of a railway station, it would have been a prime target during the war and the explosion was big enough to register a minor tremor of a 1.7 magnitude on the Richter scale. Nobody was hurt, thankfully, since the bomb detonated in the middle of a cornfield. However, the incident did serve as a reminder of the unfortunate potential of a World War II era bomb to explode in a more populated or urban area. Would you like to learn more about accidental discoveries? Let me know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on World List.